Hi, and welcome to the tutorial video for the first pre-lab in STATS 250. We're going to get started here by opening R, which you should already have installed on your computer. Uh, if you're using your personal computer or if you're using a sites computer, it should be installed for you. If you haven't already installed R on your personal computer and would like to follow the instructions on the or in the other videos that are linked on this Canvas page or on the description of this YouTube video. So we're going to start by opening R. Uh, I just have a desk or an icon for R on my desktop, or I can also access it through the start menu if uh, I would like it if I'm because I'm using Windows. On uh, a Mac, you can find this. Uh, you can open R through Finder, through a Spotlight search, or through just your app launcher. So I'm going to start by double clicking the R icon to open it. And now this is the R console. So the R console here is where you would type commands to R. R is a statistical computing environment, and so it has commands and syntax that you can type and uh, you can code with R. In this class, we're not going to be focusing on that coding aspect of R. Instead, we're going to be using an interface to R that's called R Commander. So to open that up, we're going to type in the console the word library in all lowercase, an open parenthesis, and then a capital R, CMDR, and close that parenthesis. It's very important that you type this exactly as you're seeing it on your screen. R is a computing program, and it turns out com the computers are pretty dumb and only do exactly what you tell them. So if you don't tell the computer to open R Commander in this exact way, uh, it's not going to know what you're talking about. So once you have this typed exactly this way, just go ahead and press Enter or Return to open R Commander. As our commander opens, you should see some messages printed in the console, things like loading required package, stuff like this. Um, this is perfectly normal. And after a minute, you should see our commander open. If it took a bit of time to get it running on your computer, uh, don't worry, that's probably just a result of it being opened for the first or second time. Um, I, this video is edited to cut out all that waiting time. So this is our commander, and I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this to give you a bit of a tour. So our commander has two main panes here. So the top is a tabbed interface that has one tab called R script and another tab called R markdown. We're going to be focusing primarily on the R markdown tab today. But the script window is where you can type commands to R just like in the R console. The output window down at the bottom here is where the results of those commands that you provide to R will be printed. So you can provide commands to R in R Commander either by typing R script or by using drop-down menus up at the top. These pre-lab videos will focus primarily on using these drop-down menus here because that's the power of R Commander. You don't necessarily have to type uh, R commands if you don't want to. We're going to go ahead and focus on the R Markdown window. So let's go ahead and click that tab. The R Markdown pane contains an R Commander Markdown template. R Markdown is a system for combining R code, R output, and text uh, in a nice report that can be generated uh, that combines your whole statistical analysis from top to bottom. And it's a really important tool that's becoming more and more popular in the statistics and data science worlds. You can see there's a couple of things that jump out at you right away in this template. The first is this line here that says replace with main title. That is exactly what it says it is. That's the title of your document. So here, let's title this document something like getting started with our markdown. And here where it says your name, you're going to want to replace that with your name. Here, I'm going to call us the stats 250 instructional team. And then if you scroll down, you'll see some more uh, interesting things that look a little complicated uh, in the rest of this document. These things are called code chunks. So a code chunk starts with three backticks and then a curly brace and then the letter R followed by a space and some options. You don't necessarily have to worry about those options or the structure of that chunk. Rather, we just want you to be able to identify a chunk and hopefully some of the code that is contained in that chunk. So you're going to see essentially three backticks, curly brace, R, close that curly brace, and then three backticks down at the bottom. And then in between those two lines is a bunch of R code. 
the R chunks that are automatically included in the R Commander Markdown template are designed to make sure that your uh, R Markdown document works well with R Commander. So don't touch either of these chunks. You'll see a second one down here. The same structure applies. Three backticks, a curly brace, the letter R, some code in the middle, and three more backticks that denote the end of the chunk. After these chunks, we can put some, some spaces and start typing uh, text. So here I've typed some text, and this will appear in a separate paragraph uh, at the, er, in my document. The reason it will show up in a second par or separate paragraph is because there's a blank line between the last set of backticks and my text. Let's save this file and see what it looks like. So file, save our markdown file as. So now I'm in a folder that I'll remember, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this file as something called uh, testing.rmd. You can call it whatever you like. Notice that I'm ending the file name with .rmd. That tells the computer that this is an R markdown file. Can I click save? And then I'll come over and click this button that says generate report. And now in a browser, you'll notice that an HTML file has opened. So R markdown generates essentially web pages as its report format by default. If you're asked which format you would prefer to generate the output in, um, choose HTML. Your uh, pre-lab assignments will require you to upload HTML files. So we can see that we have uh, our title, our name, the date is included automatically, and some text that we typed. So that sentence that we typed in in that document earlier. Let's learn how to format this text. So R Markdown is not like a, a, an editor like Microsoft Word or Pages on a Mac or Google Docs. There's no button for bold or italic text. But sometimes you want to emphasize something, like your answers to the pre-lab assignments. So let's go back into R Commander, and let's make some text bold and italic. To make text italic, you want to surround that text with a single asterisk. And now we can click Generate Report again. And in a new tab in that window, you'll see that text example text is now in italics because we surrounded it with a single asterisk. If we want to make something bold, we can surround it by two asterisks. So now this will make our, the text R Markdown bold. Let's click Generate Report again. So now we can see that example text is in italic and R Markdown is in bold just like we told our command or our markdown to do in our document. So single asterisks makes text uh, italic and double asterisks makes text bold. So let's open an example document and see something a little more complicated. This is something that is gonna be similar to uh, what you're gonna be doing on uh, your first pre-lab assignment. So we'll come up to file, open our markdown file, and your pre-lab assignment will have asked you to download a file from Canvas, a .rmd file specifically. We're going to go ahead and open up a different rmd file. I don't care about saving the current one. And you can see uh, that the file, the R Markdown file, has opened in the R Markdown pane of R Commander. So there's a title called Prelab One, getting started with R Markdown. Uh, our author is Stats250 Instructional Team. And now you can scroll through and you can see that there are more chunks added to this. So there's more code here. Here's a chunk that makes a bar plot or a bar graph and some text as well as some more chunks and more text. If we go ahead and click Generate Report, we can see what this report looks like after it's been generated. So this is a report, it's an analysis about the number of people who survived the Titanic by class. So first class, second class, third class passengers, as well as the crew. So we've got a couple of bar graphs here. And notice that we also have some formatted text. So we have the word Titanic. The name of the ship should be italicized. So if we find that text in the R Markdown document, we can see that we have surrounded the word Titanic by single asterisks, which makes it italic. There's also some code that appears here 
some numerical summaries, as well as oopsies, we have a bar plot that should not be here. This is a plot that doesn't have a title or axis labels, and it was generated accidentally when I was trying to make these nicer plots here. Oftentimes, this is going to happen to you in your prelabs. You're going to generate some output, uh, you're going to make a graph, you're not going to quite like it, and you're going to change it again. But it will appear multiple times in your R Markdown document. And so we want to delete this graph from this. So our report is not cluttered with bad graphs or things that we don't want to include in it. So we want to find the, the, the chunk of code that makes this plot. And it turns out that it is this chunk here. We can tell because it says bar plot, it makes a bar graph, but there's nothing about a title. You can see in the other uh, plot chunks, there's another bar plot, but there's text here, right? There's a label for the y-axis, for example, or a title, percentage of Titanic survivors. In this last, uh, we can identify uh, that this chunk corresponds to this graph because there's an appropriate title in that code. So we want to go ahead and delete this extra bar plot. To do that, we need to delete the entire chunk of code. So we're going to highlight and delete everything between those backticks, including the backticks themselves. We're going to delete the whole chunk. So let's go ahead and highlight that and click Backspace. And let's click Generate Report again. Now a new report version is going to open up in our browser in a new tab. You can scroll down and you can see now that there are only two graphs. So this is now a nicer, clean report here. Once you have created your report, once you finished editing that, we want to go ahead and upload that uh, your assignment to Canvas. So if you go into the folder where you saved your R Markdown file, you'll now see a handful of files. The first is a .rmd file. Uh, this is your R Markdown file. The second is uh, a .md file, and the third will be an HTML file. That HTML file is your report. And this file that's in this folder is what you want to upload to Canvas as your submission to this assignment. Uh, don't upload anything that you saved from your browser. Upload the HTML file that you see in the folder where you saved that .rmd file. So go ahead and once you've completed the assignment, upload that HTML file to Canvas as your submission. If you're having any problems with this, feel free to email your GSI. Good luck with this first pre-lab, and we look forward to meeting you in lab this week.